a uh, couple clients didn't show up, so it's time to do some cardio, get start him for a workout, depending on who else cancels. Got a little bit of snow today. Um, basically trying to figure out the whole YouTube stuff. Um, try to get videos out and give you guys some more information on what I do when I work out and what I think other people should be doing. Starting my warm up right now on the treadmill. See if I can fall off while showing it to you guys. Um, <clears throat> just starting to walk. Typically with warm ups, we're looking at you know five, eight, ten minutes of cardio based warm up before you do any strength training um, or any other workout for the, that matter. Um, basically, the goal is to slowly elevate your heart rate slowly elevate everything, get your muscles moving, get blood pumping through your body, bringing heat everywhere, getting it, you know, ready to work out. Top of it, want to start out nice and slow, build it up about every two minutes. When I was doing a lot of metabolic testing, uh, we kind of built these workouts specifically based on the tests, looking at, you know, what points do people actually start to warm up? At what point does, do they get to this point where their body's ready to work out, heart rate drops and comes down, and they get to kind of this initial steady state. Um, for a lot of people, it'll take like 10 minutes, but if we program it right, we can kind of make it optimal and know that it happened. So we can give clients essentially the speeds to go at and say, hey, if you go two minutes here, two minutes here, two minutes here, stop here, take a five minute break, do your foam rolling, do your, you know, any other, you know, stability or activation stuff you want to do before you go do your lifts um, and then get your workout on. You're going to improve your body's ability to favor fat as an energy source. Um, <clears throat> make sure I'm not telling people that, hey, if you warm up right, you're going to burn more fat. Uh, it's just you're going to favor it as an energy source, depending on what you're doing for exercise. Um, and I can show you this with metabolic testing saying, hey, here's the O2, CO2 ratios that say you're using fat for energy. And here's the one saying using carbs for energy. After you warm up this way and take your five minute break, you're going to have a higher percentage of fat being used, essentially associated with a um, better respiratory quotient for that metric. Cool. So I'm going to get my warm up going and come back to you guys with the exercises. See if I can actually edit a video together. Finishing the warm up. Getting ready to go do a little bit of mobility. Obviously, a little bit out of breath. Um, here's the stop button. I just wanted to go through a couple tools that I use for my warm ups when I have my clients' warm ups. Uh, basically, when we're trying to loosen things up, maybe do a little bit of myofascial release, get a little more blood flowing into an area, or potentially uh, <clears throat> inhibit a muscle from being overactive. Uh, use foam rollers, and then obviously with some mobility stuff, can't go wrong with a piece of PVC pipe. Um, this one's a three quarter inch piece of PVC pipe. I typically try to use probably an inch, um, something a little bigger, not quite as much flex to it but when I do my warm ups. Here are a couple more examples of PVC pipe I use with warming up and stability exercises. So these are one inch pieces of PVC pipe. Um, I cut them to about shoulder height. That's probably all anybody really needs. Head height would probably be the maximum height um, for length. But as you can see, as I push on them, they don't flex. Uh, so a lot better when you're using it for balance or even doing some of your stability exercises. Another reason why I like the one inch diameter is it's much closer to the thickness of uh, an Olympic bar. Here are a few more of the tools that I use with uh, kind of mobility, myofascial release, kind of loosening muscles up before and after workouts, or even if they're just sore from other things I've done in my life. Some foam rollers are denser than others. Um, some brands are just made differently. So we've got a couple TP therapy rollers here. These are called the grid. So they come in different uh, thicknesses or I guess densities as well. So. Nice little layout so you can get a little bit more aggressive if you want to and if you don't want to, it's got a few flat spots. And a couple more items from TB Therapy I use a lot on my calves. This allows me to get a little bit more um, specific in the areas or using on smaller muscles. A couple more things this is kind of good for being able to work on your erectors and some of the lateral muscles of your spine. Uh, so lacrosse ball, you can throw one of these in a sock, tie a knot in it and make one of those yourself um, or two lacrosse balls. So. Uh, lacrosse ball is a phenomenal tool, nice, hard, dense rubber. Um, if it's too hard for people, a tennis ball is another option. It's a little bit softer to be able to dig into some of those muscles yourself. My dense foam, so black foam roller right here. Uh, as you can see, something about the durability of these items. One thing about the foam rollers is they do kind of tend to chip apart when you have children and dogs and pets attacking them. So they're probably not quite as durable as these TP therapy ones. And you can see they found the same brutal abuse from dogs and children and cats. 
um, that the foam roller has and they just tend to stand up better. The last couple items are these uh, flexor grip bars. I think they're both TheraBand. Um, yeah, TheraBand flex bar. They're meant for um, strengthening muscles within your forearm and your grip, but they're wonderful for like your myofascia and rolling them out and using them as that. So once again, black, dense, heavy, um, and then you know, lighter colors tend to have different you know, densities to them, so for different use cases. But that's what I use and the tools I use with my clients.